Good evening, I'm Jack Fujii and welcome to the fifth session of Agriculture 194N, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. We come to you live every Thursday evening from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And we also come to you via the Hawaii Interactive Television System and your local cable community service channel. <clears throat> this evening we are featuring Ken's House of Pancakes here in Hilo. For those of you joining us for the first time, Focus on Agriculture is a course to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture. And each semester we focus on a different subject area on diversified agriculture. And this semester we're focusing on local chefs from restaurants in the area. And the chefs will be preparing various dishes em emphasizing local agriculture commodities. Before we go on, I'd like to make a few announcements, and if I may have the Elmo, uh, the first uh, that I'd like to mention is that uh, we'd like to have you watch Focus on UH Hilo, which is every Tuesday evening, and next Tuesday, September 30th, uh, at 8 to 8.30 p.m. on this very same channel, we have Dr. William Pierman, who is the host of Focus on UH Hilo. Dr. Pierman is Senior Vice President and Chancellor of UH Hilo. His guests uh, next Tuesday evening are Dr. Norio Kaifu. He's the Director and Professor of the Subaru Telescope National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, and uh, they are located here at the University Park. Also joining Dr. Pierman will be Dr. Richard Chamberlain. He is a technical manager at the Caltech Submillimeter Observatory. So please stay tuned next Tuesday evening, that's September 30th from 8 to 8.30 p.m. on this very same channel for Focus on UH Hilo. Also, I'd like to mention that the seventh annual Hawaii Conference of the World Sustainable Agriculture Association will be meeting on November 8th through the 9th this year at the Royal Kona Resort. The theme of the uh, conference is Living the Land, and if you'd like more information, please call 808-595-6344. That's 808-595-6344. Also, the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Hilo and UH Manoa's College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources will be having a hydroponics conference and field trip. Uh, the conference will be held at the University of Hawaii College of Agriculture Farm in Paneeva. That's Friday, November 14th. And the field trip will be on Saturday, November 15th. For more information, call Dwight Sato at 959-9155. That's 959-9155. Okay. Uh, since we are coming to you live this evening at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience, and of course those of you here in the studio, will have an opportunity to ask questions of our guest speaker. And as I mentioned earlier, this evening we are featuring Ken's House of Pancakes. So uh, what I'd like to do now is to uh, introduce our guest for the evening. This evening we have Rick Mayava. Uh, Rick is the general manager of uh, Ken's House of Pancakes and he's been there for seven years and he has 26 years of uh, uh, restaurant experience. Joining Rick, we have Lana Cabral, better known as Auntie Lana. Auntie Lana is the kitchen manager of, at Ken's House of Pancakes, and she's uh, been there for 26 years, so she's got a lot of experience. Joining Lana, we have Rick Louise. Uh, Rick is uh, the head cook at Ken's, 
and he's been there for 15 years. So uh, another man with a lot of experience. And finally joining Rick is uh, Hoss Gray. Uh, he is a cook and uh, I'm told that he is the comedian cook at uh, Ken's House of Pancakes. So, uh, and he has five years of experience, so be prepared for a real interesting presentation. So I hope you don't change the channel. Uh, stay tuned and let's get cooking with Ken's House of Pancakes. So, Rick, go ahead. Um, before we start anything, I'd like to, first of all, thank the people of Hilo and of the Big Island for a wonderful award they gave us last week. Uh, it was called the Reader's Choice Award from the Tribune Herald, and it was, uh, I have to thank you for choosing Ken's as your favorite place to have breakfast. And I'd like to thank our employees for being as good as they are to uh, get us to this point. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, we, well, last time we were here, we were going to make tripe stew for you, but we, <clears throat> when I started digging into the pot, it turned out we brought the oxtail instead of the tripe. So this time we are going to do it. Because it takes so long to make, we are just going to show you some of the preparation, and then we're going to build it and put it together. It's already mostly cooked and done. But Lana's going to show you how we cut and uh, the type of cuts we make. You find that we use there's a lot more tripe than there is vegetables, so, and there's a little secret that we add to it, and I'll tell you about that near the end of, of Lana's presentation. Okay, so I'll let uh, Auntie Lana get started here on, on doing this. As you all know, tripe comes into a, a big slab, and you have to cut it up to your bite size pieces. And that's exactly what we did this morning, mm -hmm. and we boiled it for about an hour, then we drained it, then we added more water to it, and that's what we're going to use for our broth, which we have in our cooler. The reason you see the tripe, uh, the color that it is, it normally is white, but that's uh, part of that little ingredient that we add near the end uh, that gives it that color, and we'll pretty much tell you what that is. It, it gave it a really wonderful flavor. We made it uh, the regular old-fashioned way for quite a couple of years, and then we ran across uh, something a little special, which we like to do with ours. It's quite different. What are we adding there, Rick? This that is, is the broth, actually. This is the broth that we had cooked. After we rinsed it off, we cooked it a little longer. And this is what the broth is, consists of. And we use tomato sauce as our base. And now I'm going to show you how we cut our vegetables for this dish. And what you won't notice as Lana's cutting is that we didn't bring the celery with us, but we're just showing you the vegetables we're putting in. The vegetables have already been made earlier, and we're going to add those. Um, the recipe prim primary for this is a small load for us, but it's a one pound of tripe, two pieces of celery. Is it okay to, to give the recipe right now? Um, two carrots, one large onion, two bell peppers, one teaspoon of salt, pepper, and beef I'm base. So we do I'm add a little beef base and one teaspoon of Tabasco, and two 15-ounce cans of tomato sauce. What we'd like to add to ours now, which we have just kind of discovered is really a nice flavor, is chili powder. That's what gives it that nice brown color. It may not look that pretty, but it sure is delicious. And uh, tripe is one of those kind of things you either love it or you don't. It's, so, and overcooking it, uh, not as good. You have to have it fairly crunchy. It's got to be a nice rubbery kind of, kind Rick, of flavor. Rick, is the tripe stew uh, served every day or is it on special days? It's on special days only. We preserve, we serve uh, tripe stew on Fridays. We figure that's the day that most people like to go out and party a little bit. And uh, tripe stew seems to be a, a wonderful after partying type of dinner or lunch uh, for some reason. The Mexicans also use it uh, when they party a little too much. It's called menudo. They make a soup. Uh, we also have it for breakfast in the morning. So if you missed us that evening, you can come in and have a tripe omelet that we make Saturday mornings. And we, if we have time tonight, we'll, we'll make you a tripe omelet also. Thank you. And Ken's House of Pancake is the only restaurant that's open 24 hours a day, right? It feels it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one's going inside. 
the vegetables I have just cut is all pre-cooked already in this bas in this bag so that we can move on with the show here. And all we're doing is adding this to the broth and the tripe. We'll bring it to a boil and I'll thicken it up. And um, where's the roux? Later I'll thicken it up with um, a roux. We make a roux which is equal amount of butter and flour. And this is our thickening agent. This is what we use to thicken up our gravies. And roux is primarily <coughs> butter and flour, equal portions. Okay. Now we're going to go into... Right now we're going to go into, Lana's going to make a uh, papaya chicken. It's a dish she brought by one day to the restaurant. It's been a favorite of all the employees. I don't think any customers ever really got any of it because we didn't to reach that far. Employees are on their break, so we, <laughs> whenever we do make it, we have to make a little more than usual. It's just like uh, Auntie Lana's stew that she made uh, a couple years ago, and it's, it's been a very big hit. And I'll let Lana start getting carried away with the uh, papaya, papaya chicken. Yeah. Again, we did the same thing with the the chicken and papaya. Yeah, we kind of we're gonna improvise. I'm gonna show you how we do the cutting of the papaya and the cleaning. Um, we we're using a very green papaya, just like to remind you folks if you enjoy watching Agriculture 194 and focus on agriculture. Please let others know about it. We come to you live every Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30 p.m. on this very same channel. I can't do that so hard. <laughs> You're telling me to slow down, but I can't because <laughs> this papaya is so green. I don't have this strength. And next Thursday evening, we will be featuring Topo Gigio's here in Hilo, another fine oh, Italian restaurant. So we hope you'll join us next <laughs> Thursday. <coughs> this evening, we're featuring Ken's House of Pancakes. And uh, we have a good menu for you this evening, tripe stew and uh, chicken or papaya chicken now. So Rick, how did you get into the uh, restaurant business? Well, about, uh, I think it was about 1965, uh, started working at a Buzz's Steakhouse as a dishwasher. And uh, it started from there. I was about, uh, I believe about 15 or 16 years old when I first started the business. Yeah. Washed dishes when there was no machines and <laughs> enjoyed it. It was a good business. I've uh, worked in Lake Tahoe. I've worked on. Uh, Want to help me cut some of these? Built a couple of restaurants up there. Worked in uh, at Patch of Punalu and on the island of Oahu. Uh, it's, it's been a it's been a long long time. It was nice to find. In fact, I told myself I'd never do it again until I ran into Ken's and fell in love with the people and the, the climate, everything there. And okay, this we one decided is just for to, demonstration. Yep. To do that with Ken's, so I'm back in the business again. Yep. And tonight, instead of using um, chicken um, thighs with the bone, I'm using um, boneless chicken, yeah, because at Cairns we have a lot of children that come into Cairns, and we like the children to have exactly the same as adults can eat, and, but we don't want them to choke. So if you chop up a chicken thigh, you can have the bone sticking out, and that can injure the child. So I'm using chicken thighs without the bone. A little bit. Babe. So these chicken thighs that we use, they're bo skinless and boneless, so it becomes real easy to, to work with. So how many employees do you have over at uh, Ken's? We have right now 50 employees. When we first bought Ken's, uh, there were 65. But with a little bit of trimming and uh, taking what we call the cream of the crop, 
employees. We are now down to 50, and they're, they're excellent employees. They're very good at what they do. One more bit. Um, a lot of them are, are a lot of them do several jobs. They can be busboys, dishwashers, they can be cooks. They, we have a gentleman that's also a host and, and that does all of the above also. We added a little oil to our wok. Now we add our chicken. Um, we don't put too much oil in this one because the chicken has a lot of oil. You'd be so surprised when you work with chicken as much as we have. Yeah. I need the ginger. And then with this, we'll add some ginger. All we're doing is browning the chicken. And we're going to pound it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hammer. You'll notice that Lana does it restaurant style. We just throw the entire piece of garlic and ginger right in there. <laughs> never mind the peeling, never mind smash it and throw it in. Yes, wash it and throw it in. Okay, we need the uh, pop papaya. As you know, Kansas is a lot of home style cooking. As you notice when we start, we get started here. And that's what makes it good. It's because it's home style, you know, might be just like what grandma does, or mom, aunts, uncles. Never mind. Okay. Now we, we're going to make a broth, which we're going to use, um, we use a chicken base to this to make the broth stronger, yeah? I need some water here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, yeah. My clown, he just wants to give me a cup here. And we cover the chicken. Then we'll just bring this to a boil. Then we'll add about two teaspoons of this base. This is a very strong soup base. So you have to be very careful. As you notice, I didn't add any salt because the base sometimes can be very salty. The bases we use also do not have any MSG in or anything like that. We don't. We try to stay away from that. One of the things that attracted me to Kent when I went into the back of the kitchen, I noticed they were making their own gravies or making their own salad dressings. Everything was done by scratch. The prep area was uh, pretty busy during the days. They were preparing everything. It's, it's pretty amazing to see what they do back there. Okay, well, we'll let this one cook for a while, let it come to a boil. The papaya is the last thing that we'll add, because as we stated from earlier, we prepared it before we came, to, came up here. And we'd like to thank Stacy for our green papayas. She's another friend of Cairns. You need papaya, call her up and we get them. <laughs> okay. I've got used to it, yes. At first, when Rick first um, presented it to me, I had a hard time. All the utensils that goes with a walk, but now I find it very easy, very easy. You gonna take the Kahlua pig? While, this, while we're waiting for this, what I'll do is, uh, we're gonna make some Kahlua pig and cabbage, but what we're gonna do is just basically show you how we prepare the Kahlua pig itself. It's an oven style Kahlua pig. A lot of you have seen it uh, done a half a dozen ways, but we do it just a little bit different. I would need um, stuff right there and the salt, white salt. 
I feel like a doctor. For those of you who are channel surfing and have uh, clicked on to our channel here, you're watching Agriculture 194N, Focus on Agriculture, a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening. And uh, as I indicated earlier, if you enjoy watching this program, please uh, let others know about it. This evening we're featuring Ken's House of Pancakes. And what are we doing now, Rick? We're lining the bottom of the pan with uh, banana leaves. And I like to put several in there. Um, my last name being Mayaba, I have, I guess, a little bit of a Samoan background here. And we use banana for a lot of things. So, <laughs> you'll so this find is the way you make your Kalua pig. This is the way, well, we used to do it in the ground back, back then, but uh, in the oven, it tastes very wonderful. It's trying to break it down. There's a lot of flavor in every, every part of the banana leaf and stem. Need the I guess we're going to call it Kalua pork butt. <laughs> yes, what it is. Okay. <laughs> I need some tea leaves, too, just a couple of tea leaves. Oh, this is just like a regular emu. Mm -hmm. That's what we're creating, actually. So you first line it with banana leaves, and then we're going with the uh, tea leaves. And about uh, how many pound size uh, pork? This, <laughs> a little bigger than I had anticipated, but. <laughs> Rick, if you want to shoot it over, you may. This is about a five or six pounder here. What I do is I score it. Make some. Good one-inch cuts throughout, throughout the piece. Next thing we do is I take liquid smoke. This is about a half of a cup. Seems like a lot, but it works mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. And I do recommend wearing gloves with, as most of you know, this will stay with you forever. This liquid smoke, it's hard to get it to smell and everything's hard to get off your hands. Can you buy Just that liquid smoke at the uh, local... Uh, any market has it. Market. Every market has it. I then just sprinkle generously Hawaiian salt. That sure looks like a mini emu. <laughs> then slowly just cover it back up again. What I do now is, these are banana stalks. Moisture and the flavor that comes out of them is, is wonderful. We like to add these to ours too. Just put it in along the edges. Build everything in. I need a tin foil. And what we do now is just seal it very, very tightly. But what we should do before this, we do this, I'm sorry, I didn't do it here. Fill it half up with water. Fill it up to the side of the pork with water. And it cooks for approximately, how long now? About, about four hours at about 350. About four hours at uh, 350 degrees. It's more too full. And you try to get it the tin foil as tight as possible. What, what you are attempting to do is form a, a steam chamber. It makes it so it cooks within itself here. And when you take it out, I would definitely let it cool for about 15, 20 minutes because the bone is extremely hot in there. And use forks to shred it. And that's it. That's how we make our uh, cool pig and cabbage. But. We're going to have Haas now make the actual clue of pig and cabbage, put that together. <laughs> Surprise. Cut the cabbage. Cut the cabbage, Well, we didn't bring you to just cut, huh? the, cut the cabbage. Do we use this one? Anyone you want. Yep. Oh, there's some big boys. 
For those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194N, a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii Hilo. And the name of the course is Focus on Agriculture. And we are coming to you live this evening from the TV studios located in the Mo'ukini Library here at the University of Hawaii Hilo campus. And this evening we're featuring Ken's House of Pancakes where we'll be preparing tripe stew, papaya chicken, kalua pig in cabbage. And I think Haas is going to start preparing the kalua pig in cabbage. You can do it, you can do it. <laughs> oh, suction. Suction. You got it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good fine. So this uh, will serve about how many people's? Uh, rig? Well, we look out here. It'll for everything we're going to have today. That's going to serve quite a few. We can, with just the amount we're going to use, we can probably serve about five or six people fully. Okay. Uh, but we're going to have several different items out there for everybody to poo poo on. So we're actually going to cut it in half of what we originally had brought. So coming up. What we're going to do too, we put the clue of pig in, this is after it's been shredded, we're also going to add a little bit of water to the pan. Uh, the water is just basically to help steam the cabbage a bit. Uh, we used to pre-steam our cabbage mm -hmm. and throw it in, but turns out yeah. after a, a quick stir fry it was Any just cooked a little bit more than we had, a, we had wanted. The cabbage should have a slight crunch to it. This class is the fourth uh, agriculture, focus on agriculture class where we featured cooking and uh, after each uh, semester of cooking we have a cookbook and if you're interested in our past cookbooks, uh, if I can have the Elmo, you can write to me and uh, the address is the College of Agriculture, University of Hawaii at Hilo, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii. Or if you have any comments regarding Focus on Agriculture, I'll be happy to uh, hear from you. Uh, if you are on the internet, uh, you can also get a hold of me at uh, jpuji at hawaii.edu. And if you have any comments or uh, uh, questions that you'd like to ask me, well, uh, feel free to email me or write me. And if you know anyone that's interested in enrolling in the College of Agriculture, uh, you can also give me a call. We have an excellent agriculture program here at the University of Hawaii Hilo. And now we have uh, the people at Ken's House of Pancake and uh, they're preparing the Kalua pig and cabbage. Um, while the boys are finishing up with their Kalua pig and cabbage, I'm going to add some patis to this. And like the last show, I eyeball everything. Even if they tell me two teaspoon, it's eyeball. If Lana says a teaspoon, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> And I'm going to add some of the papaya that we had already pre-cooked. Does the papaya, the green papayas, uh, make the chicken make real chicken. tender? Yes, it yeah, does. It does. It does. And the papaya turns extremely tender. It's a wonderful flavor. And uh, and again, this is served at uh, Ken's House of Pancakes. Mm -hmm. We have what we call Auntie Lana specials. Lana does about six to seven specials daily for lunch and for dinner. Um, several years ago, we 
decided that we needed to communicate a little bit more with the local people and to get our local specials out. And uh, Lana was chosen for this purpose because she was very good at what she did. And it was nice watching her enjoy yourself in the kitchen and cooking up a storm. So, so every time you go to there. Ken's House of Pancake, make sure you look at that blackboard with mm -hmm. all the specials on it, right? Oh, yeah. And if they turn out really good, you'll find them on our menu a year or so later. So. <laughs> <laughs> Much to the chagrin of the cooks. Our menu is roughly about 180 items right now. In about another month, I'm having another menu. Uh, we're creating another menu right now. It'll be actually a full three-page menu. We're adding quite a few, quite a few items. We're adding uh, more breakfast uh, items. We also have an egg beaters uh, situation. Uh, from the people at Dick's restaurant, when uh, Dick's uh, lost their business, it was rather unfortunate. And a lot of his customers were very much, uh, they loved their vegetarian sausages, their bacon, and their egg beaters. So just to help them out, we did the same thing. We, we put it in for them. And I, I do appreciate their help on this. It's going to be on the new menu. How long was the fire cooked? Um, it's, 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 uh, it's, the papaya is just like a squash. It doesn't take very long, 15, 20 minutes, that's all you need. Oh, yes. Are we adding the cabbage? Low. <laughs> cabbage, cabbage. It's alive. We have a three ring circus going here. We've got. Uh, tripe We've never stew. heard Haas this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have plenty to say to us tomorrow. No, we off? Can no, we're we not. Off? No, we're not. <laughs> Add some Hawaiian salt. That's a pinch. A little flavor. Yeah, see, you mix me. So, no. Haas, where, uh, Haas, where did you get your uh, cooking training? <laughs> the best person, Mom. Okay. <laughs> 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 so we have the uh, tripe stew go going and uh, papaya chicken and Kahlua pig and cabbage. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So Auntie Lana, how often do you come up with one of your big specials? <laughs> When the boss come with his big stick and said, let's get together. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we try to talk. And what, I have a good relationship with my boys at work, the cooks. And they come up with some pretty good ideas too. And they pass it on to me. And we work it out together. And we try it. If it goes, it's on the menu. Hoss likes a lot of salt in here, so we have to watch him. <laughs> Body by salt. <laughs> so, Rick, do you get a lot of letters uh, from people coming from, I know a lot of people that come from the airport uh, arriving in Hilo always stop by Ken because okay. it's so close. Uh, do you get letters from people on the mainland? Uh, we get quite a nice response. There's, uh, once in a while we get phone calls from different states where people want us to send them t-shirts or hats or they, we don't normally sell our hats. They're strictly for the cooks and we've kept that uh, in that direction but the t-shirts we've been setting off all over the place for people. They, uh, they come in to tell us that they've been told uh, to stop by Ken's. It's the first place they have to stop before they do anything on the Big Island, and they're usually happy that they've done so. Whenever um, you need put it in. We have a nice, diversified clientele. It's, it's great. Uh, Rick, do you have uh, takeout lunches for people? We have all takeouts constantly. Anything they'd like can be taken out. And what, what is your phone number over there at Ken's? Our phone number is 935-8711. And what we're doing now also, we're also allowing our hostesses to take take out orders over the phone so our customers don't have to wait for a waitress to come while they're, they're so busy. So uh, feel free to call. We, we're we in the food business, so we have to. So how much advance uh, we don't need any advance. Do you have to give? Nothing. Just call us. It'll be ready in 10 minutes. Uh, you, you know, as we say in Hilo, if you have to drive more than five minutes, you're too far away. <laughs> You're from out of town. <laughs> we also do a lot of uh, 
uh, banquet type of things for people, special order. We have a room there called the Tapa Room off to the side, which used to be the old um, Tapa Bar. We utilize that for special engagements, parties, um, um, what do they call them? Just for anything, any kind of a group. We can hold up to about 40 people there. And we do anything they want. They want a buffet style, they want poo-poo style, they want uh, whatever their requests are. If they want to go right off our menu, it doesn't matter. We can always accommodate anybody in that direction there. And uh, I'm sorry. Ricky there better tell us what he's doing so we can follow. Just cleaning the ginger. Okay. He said it's the worst job I gave him yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we're doing is we're preparing for our next, our next dish, which is going to be oriental steam mahi. So he's kind of helping me out by cleaning my ginger. Yeah, so we'll be fine. Oh, Hoss, that looks real good. You brought yeah, the pole in the back. You give me a lot of love. Okay. <laughs> That's why our food tastes good. Well, all the cooks tell me that if you want to be a good cook, it has to come from the heart, right? Always. All right, right. You got to like what you're doing. And you got to be willing to eat it. <laughs> oh, we do eat it. <laughs> Don't prepare anything you're not willing to eat. I know it's hard to become a cook for uh, you, Rick, over there at Ken's House of Pancakes, but what if there's a... Uh, real aspiring uh, cook that would like to to start off uh, how, how would you suggest uh, a cook start off in in, in the uh, restaurant business well in our business it's a little different than others uh, at Ken's we try to teach them even with experience we normally like to have them just go in the kitchen either become a prep or a dishwasher first just to get to know the people uh, know where the layout is know how things go know how to prep the food then we bring them into the line. And it takes quite a while. It takes about three months training for most cooks on our line. Our cooking is a little different no matter where you come from, it's different. Uh, our demands are such that we are extremely busy. We do about anywhere from 500 to 700 breakfasts in the morning. And when you're doing almost $1,000 a day, let's just say that at a $6 average ticket, six fifty. so everybody's very busy. You have to know what you're doing at Ken's. You have to remember the menu. There's numbers to remen remember. Uh, you have to have a good memory. Enough. Very good. And you have to get along we'll with everybody. Right Was the Spanish omelet 58? The Spanish omelet is uh, number 38. 38. 38. 38. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not a cook there. <laughs> I was just trying to test you. <laughs> you had me thinking there. 50, yeah, I didn't know. Rick is climbing to that number, believe me, he is. I'm slowly getting there. We passed it? Oh, yeah. Oh, we passed it. <laughs> That's right, we're into the 60s already. We're, we're going to slowly, slowly work it on 70s soon. Auntie Lana, does it make a difference whether you uh, chop the ginger up or smash it? Uh, yes, it does. It depends on what you're doing. Um, you know, this type of cooking, I want to get that ginger all the way out of there, so get all the juice to go in. Um, on this one now, I'm kind of slicing it because it's going on my mahi. And it's like a decoration piece. But when you put your, when I put the hot sesame oil, i show you on it, you know, the flavor just comes out all together. Get the money down. Yes, please. Two. Rick, do you have a, a signature dish over there at Ken's House of oh. Pancake or well, something that you really, I, I know one thing that you're really noted for and, and, and that's your omelets. Mm -hmm. It's the style, at the, yeah, near the end of the show we will uh, prepare, if, if we have time, one or two omelets for it just to show exactly how we do them. Um, can heat them up? How about, how about yours? It's hard to say. It's we have so many. We in fact we had a, a young man that worked for us for some time, uh, a gentleman by the name of Doug French that did a, a computerized study of everything that we make at Kansas, just to see if I could cut back items on the menu that didn't sell so well. Unfortunately, his information was that everything sells extremely well. I couldn't take anything off the menu. I just had to add more on. Uh, so <laughs> we had no items that didn't sell. Put it on. Yeah. Um, 
signature items I would have to say would be our specials. So Auntie Lana, what are you doing now? I'm putting two pieces of mahi on this, on a tin foil, and I'm gonna put it on a grill here to steam it. Since we don't have a steamer to use, we're improvising. This is the fourth dish, the oriental style sesame mahi, right? Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, we will be having another cookbook at the end of the semester. And if you're interested, uh, you can call me or email me. And again, I'll just put my address on the Elmo. And if you're interested in a college of agriculture or an agriculture career, we have an excellent hands-on program at the College of Agriculture here at UH Hilo. And if you're interested, please give me a call or write. What we're doing right now is we're going to cook the mahi uh, without any flavoring or anything on it. We're basically going to steam it in the foil with its own juices. So basically just put that in foil, put it right on. Try to seal the foil as tight as possible. Um, as soon as you see steam coming out of the foil, then you've steamed it enough. Can you use uh, other types of fish uh, with this same recipe? You can, it's a, whatever you desire, actually. At home, uh, you can use a mullet, which is excellent with this type of dish. Uh, it does, it, it's, it's, anything can be done this way. We do it the way we do it here because of portion control in a restaurant. You have to have a certain amount of pieces into the steam pieces. This is one of the best ways of doing it. And one thing that you really have to have is uh, real consistency in your <coughs> in your menu, and I, I really find that in in especially your your omelets. Uh, every time I go there to have an omelet, uh, it's <laughs> always the same. Well, the new cooks that start with us can tell you how that. We don't allow them to make omelets for the public until they've broken a lot of eggs. We give them racks and racks of eggs. Just We throw away so many omelets until they get it down perfect. It's, it's not an easy omelet to make. You'll see the way these gentlemen make it today. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's hard work. You try to make it at home this way, have fun. You know, it's, it's a wonderful way of doing it. Um, but it's, it's hard, especially when you're getting, in any five minute period, uh, 30 orders or 40 orders on the line, perhaps even more, I'm not sure. It's, it's quite a task. Oh, the smell is coming over here, Rick. <laughs> can we put it on the front burner so I can reach it? Hey, did we add the roux yet? No. Okay, we're going to add the roux now to the uh, to the tripe stew. Put your hand on it. I thought I say. <laughs> How's our new stove there, Lana? Is it Great. Uh, doing the job? It's doing the job. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for buying cookbooks that enabled us to buy that uh, new stove. Buy more so we can have a sink next time. <laughs> that, that's what we're working on. Yes, you can put it in here. Check open for bias, see if it's off. Still hard. I really have to hand it to these chefs okay, because uh, we really don't have a, a kitchen here in the studio and, <laughs> and they make do with what we have and they always do an excellent job. Watch mine, mine get plenty of blood on top. Guess what you can put there. We scoop up first. Take scoop up first. Yeah. We scoop in a picture. And the papaya chicken is ready for the serving plate. Mmm, mmm, smells good. 
That really looks good on TV. <laughs> Looks like everyone's mouth is watering here in the studio. Can't wait till 8.30 to roll, al roll along so we can partake in this <laughs> excellent uh, meal here. This is what you call teamwork right here. Good. So we'll do with the heck a lot. We we'll use the. Uh, I'm gonna skip the the heck because what time are yeah. okay. I think we're gonna have to invest in a rice cooker. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. So if we have the, uh, I don't know if the overhead camera can uh, focus in here, but we have the. Um, can't tilt it too much, otherwise the the sauce will spill out. But uh, we have the uh, Kalua pig and cabbage and the well, we were gonna papaya make them, but I'm chicken. Go make them now. So can't hold it too much at an angle. Go right into the sumo men, yeah. and then we'll wait for the There's the uh, Kalua pig and cabbage. Yeah. How many here like tripe stew? One, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> How many of you know few? what tripe stew is? Little boy, but sorry. No, wait, 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 wait. I still got some of that through. We gotta let something go. Because of uh, time constraints, uh, I know Jack wanted us to do the chicken heka. It takes a little time to do that, Jack. So. What I will do is I'll uh, put Alana on the line right now, and we are going to have it for special tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and we will include the recipe in our, yeah. in our recipes that we give Jack. So come in tomorrow. You'll have Auntie Lana's Hekka. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, it's ready. It's OK. Oh, wow. That, that looks delicious. Those fish ready. Right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's for the fish. This. This one. This one we're not using. Okay, don't put it on. And that's Ken's House of Pancakes famous tripe stew. <laughs> we also make a um, oxtail stew, very similar to that. And it's delicious. We have a gentleman at the restaurant by the name of Danny Simeone, who's uh, been with the restaurant how long? 20. 20 some odd years. Danny refuses to let anybody, I've given him the recipe once or twice, he made it and refuses to let anybody else make it. He does a great job. He does a wonderful job with it. Be careful, it's extremely cool. What we're gonna do next, uh, no, we're gonna let Lana finish on the fish. We'll, we'll finish the sesame fish. It's already steaming and it's looking good. That smells good. You need some for your, or you're going to work from that end anyway. It's the main ingredient. And we're going to put the finishing touches on the uh, We have to get mahi. the oil hot now. We have to get a pan on there and get the oil hot. Yeah. Oriental style mahi with sesame seeds. No, just a small pan. Uh, okay, ready? And uh, what are you doing now? Uh, We're heating uh, sesame oil. I'll let Lana We're heating talk. up sesame oil. Okay. So I'm show you. Now what we're going to do is heat it up. And we put a teaspoon or two on our fish. Then we garnish it with chopped ginger, some green onions, and okay. some cilantro. You want to bring them all up down, boys? Bring them all down. Yeah, okay. Get a drink, man. 
where you want. Well, to I guess tonight I won't have to go to uh, Ken's House of Pancakes. Ken's House of Pancakes came to UH Hilo. Hot, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is hot. Settle on these already. <laughs> and the mahi served uh, in the foil? We serve it in the foil. Lana does several of these dishes. Uh, this she started about four or five months ago and it's been a big favorite. A lot of requests for this. I can see Ricky's eyes churning right now because that's his favorite frying pan and we're doing something very different to it. <laughs> oh no, I gotta stand on we clean this one up for you? She you should buy a dishwasher. <laughs> we did. Ricky, is that your omelet pan? <laughs> yes it is. Uh oh. Those are French uh, French cast iron pans, they're very good for omelets. Hard to find. Yes, that that really looks good. <laughs> A lot of you will notice that on our new um, specials, and we're starting to gear more towards fish and chicken. People are becoming more health conscious, and we, at the same time, are going along, trying to help them out in that direction. Rick, you said you had takeouts, and uh, your phone number over there at Ken's is 935-8711? Correct. But don't ask for the hats? <laughs> don't ask for the hats. <laughs> you may get a few phone calls uh, tomorrow. <laughs> what we're going to do now very quickly before we get into an omelet, we're going to show you a sumo min. Now, a sumo min is something that was kind of created by fun. I went to Oahu and looking for sai min bowls for the restaurant. We just couldn't find too many in Hilo. And while there, I noticed this ridic ridiculously large bowl. So I said, ah, just for fun, I'll pick up six of them and see what happens. Well, this is the bowl. We can't keep up with them now. My, uh, my father-in-law had to bring back another couple dozen. It's called a sumo min. It's, it's a pound of noodles, and it's, it's going like crazy. People love it. That's we put an egg on top of it, gai choy, yeah. and it's, it's pretty ridiculous. A couple things of um, uh, sticks of chicken, teriyaki chicken. Uh, yeah, two barbecue. Two barbecue. Chicken. And I'll let the boy show you how we prepare this. Now, Rick, your, your dad was a famous uh, wrestler, professional wrestler, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Maybe you ought to call it the Matava. <laughs> I think sumo kind of defines its size already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, first of all, Hoss going to cut the garnish, some fish cake, while I heat up these new noodles. One yeah, we also make uh, one ton now for people that have been asking at Ken's for so long. Yes, we do make our own one ton now. We uh, <laughs> again, my prep people are very happy about that. They're sitting in the back making one tons for hours on end, <laughs> so, and it's selling very well. Uh, we add that to our side mins if you want. You can have a one ton min or a sumo min with one ton. And for our new menu will also have a variety of appetizers also for the dinner crowd or for people who just want to, want to munch on things and not have a full lunch or dinner or breakfast. So the, uh, the Sai Mins and the um, Sumo Mins are all available every evening? Everything's available 24 hours a day, the entire menu. We have people coming in there in the morning for a Sumo Min, which is, 
I find hard to believe that anybody could eat one to start with, but they come in there to eat it for breakfast. I was, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> in fact, it, it took off so quickly. This just started about a month ago that we, I brought these bowls in, and it's going to be on the new menu already. There's such a demand for it. Do you have those large styrofoam containers where we can take out the nope. uh, sumo men? No, it's, it's got to be eaten on the spot. <laughs> Did uh, Akebono uh, ever try it out uh, yet? They frightened me. They <laughs> it may not be big enough. <laughs> when the noodles loosen up. Pour it into the bowl. Mm. That's one pound of noodles, 16 ounces of noodles. Also wow. Pop it off. <laughs> that is made for a sumo wrestler. Can we get the one egg? And for Patrick Collar. We're also adding kai choy. A lot of veggies in there. Mm -hmm. oh, the heat. It won't. Shall find out. Can it come off, right? And uh, an egg goes in there also? An egg goes on top. <laughs> egg, egg of your choice. Wow. Over easy. There's also eggs chopped into it. Ricky's now adding the one ton men, the one tons. You better have a lot of those ready for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I do gotta have to thank you for that. We did have quite a nice response the very uh, several days after, on end after our last show. It was very nice. Thank you people for coming. Move your tongs away there. Hmm? Your tongs. We're getting the what is the broth? <laughs> getting it nice and hot. Mm. We can leave this in the back. Ricky, you ought to get your frying pan nice and hot for those omelets. Yeah. No. We prepare for the omelets now. Number 45. Which one do you want to do? Spanish or? He's going to go for the 45. Okay. 46. I got to heat up. Something. Well, it's about 8 o'clock, so what we're going to do is while uh, the people at Ken's House of Pancakes are finishing up, maybe we can open up for question and answers. And uh, uh, what we're going to do now is uh, finish off the uh, sumo men, and uh, Ricky will. Ricky or uh, Hoff will uh, make the famous, uh, famous uh, Which one you want to make? Omelet. The Spanish sauce. No matter what, it's easiest for you right now. We just, we have to, we're just going to make one omelet and then mouth. Okay. So make the vegetarian. vegetarian one. we got to cut his tomatoes and vegetarian. Yeah. vegetarian. Okay. Uh, we are coming to you live this evening, and you're watching Agriculture 194N, <laughs> Focus on Agriculture. And uh, we've come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening, which includes Rick Mayava, General Manager, Auntie Lana Cabral, Kitchen Manager, Ricky Louise, the Head Cook, and Haas Gary. Uh, the comedian cook at the <laughs> Ken's House of Pancakes. And while uh, Ricky uh, starts uh, or finishes off the uh, sumo men, 
Uh, we'll take our first caller. Will the uh, caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, I'm calling from Hilo. Yes, go ahead. Wanted to know about uh, how much is that sumo min cost? <laughs> what was the question again? How much is the sumo min oh, cost? How much is the, the sumo min? Sumo yeah, the means. price. Uh, six ninety-five, I believe. Oh, sorry, six ninety, uh, six seventy-five. Six yep. seventy-five. Eh? Yep. Okay, man, that's and, uh, a good deal. Yeah, not bad. But with, with the one tons, it's a buck more. <laughs> oh, with the one ton, it's yeah. a buck more. That's right. A dollar hey. more. <laughs> Show all the one ton you like. Hey, how are you doing, <laughs> you doing Rick, this morning, Nepali? Hey, well, how are you Call doing? It. Okay. All right. All right, take care, man. All right, my okay, friend. Okay, bye. Thank you for calling. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Uh, Jack, uh, yes. Lower Puna. Yes. What a fantastic show you have once again. Well, again, I can't do it without our our guests, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ken's House of Pancake for joining us this evening. Now, I'm curious. I go to work early in the morning. Uh, like, I'm at work at uh, 5.30, so I can come in before that and get the sumo in? Yes. Sure. All right. Can I pick up a hat at that time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting on with the program here. If you finish an entire I'm, sumo meal. I'm uh, uh, Rick back there cooking and directing this show from your side. Fantastic. Thanks. Just awesome. And Auntie... Uh, 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 Anna? Uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> I'm curious to how come... You have one glove on one hand. Is that to keep your hand clean? And the glove yes, on the other I... hand that don't have a glove on it, is that to keep the food? Well, I, no, I'm, I can't. I... I'm confused a little bit. Oh, earlier. The sanitation there. Earlier I had two gloves, but I my knife slipped. Yeah, sometimes I cut off the, uh, <laughs> the tip of mine too when I'm doing tomatoes or something. <laughs> and the guy was doing the green onions did a great job chopping them up. I couldn't believe uh, right. that. Oh, no. Great job. Malo. And now I'll watch my omelet. Goodbye. Thank you for calling. And uh, Ricky, can you explain uh, what you're doing with the omelet? Okay, now I got the oil hot enough so where the egg don't stick to the pan. And when the egg stick, that means the pan is not hot enough. You go. So which omelet is this? This is the vegetarian omelet. It's a number 45 on the menu. Get bell peppers, mushrooms, spinach, white onions, tomatoes in between. Okay, well, I understand we have three callers. Will the first caller let us know where you're calling from? And yeah. go ahead with your question, please. Yes, sir. Hey, how's it, Jack? How are you, bro? Uh, Hello, you're on the air. Uh, uh, side. I'm asking what's in the stew. What kind of stew is that? I'm sorry, we can't hear you too well out here. Can the What kind of stew was that? Oh, it's a tripe stew. Hello? Tripe. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yes, can you go ahead. Can you hear us? What kind of stew is that? It's a tripe stew. The question was, what kind of stew uh, did we make this evening? And the answer is tripe stew. Did we bring those surfing Does that answer the question? OK, could we have the next caller, please? Uh, yeah, I call it from Hilo. OK. Uh, I'd just like to say hi to Boss Man, uh, Bariki, Koff, and Tilama. Right. right on. You guys are doing a good job. I? Who's this? I? Brandon. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Mahalo. Right on. <laughs> hey, this is the best cooks in town. Right on. Well, you one of them. Aye. Aye. <laughs> right on, right on. I just wanted to call and say hello. Hey, thanks, Brandon. Everybody Brandon. out there at Ken's House of Pancakes, number one. <laughs> That's one of our cooks. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling from Hilo. <laughs> Will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, I'm calling from Pauka. Um, I noticed that you use the banana leaves and the banana stump here yeah, for the park Kalua. Yes. Um, does it matter what kind of banana leaves you no, use? No, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Okay, and what day do you uh, serve the chicken papaya? What days? What days? Uh, that's up to Lana when she feels like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't have a set day for those kind of things. Uh, we have a small set menu on, on certain weekdays, but the other time we kind of let Lana just get imaginative and, uh, and get a have pencil her own ready way. and write and down this phone number. And when Nine, we have papayas too. 935 <laughs> 8711 and ask Rick if it's on. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for calling. Will the next caller let us know where you're calling from mm -hmm. and go ahead with your question, please? You got a paper. for me. Uh, from KL. Okay. Uh, KL. Two questions, actually. Uh, the uh, chicken papaya, you ever put that uh, paria inside? No. We haven't tried it with yet. Oh, okay. Now that you mention it, and we'll try it. Yeah, that's really good, and, and, and it, uh, with uh, suman for dessert, too. And I was wondering about the, um, the omelet there. Is that what they call a fluffy omelet? Yes. It's a French-style omelet. French-style. Thank you. Thanks, You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Keao here on the Big Island. Uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Uh, yeah, um, I'm calling from Keao. And how do you guys make your eggs so fluffy? Okay. I'm sorry? And, and what kind of oil so you guys use? Uh, we're using the blender. The blender. And you got to so constantly make it, you got to constantly keep moving it. I'll let, it, I'll let Ricky explain. Add, like um, whipped cream or something because the egg's always sweeter at your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's the chickens we use. Yeah. Hawaiian chicken. Yeah, Hawaiian chicken. Oh, yeah. chicken. Hawaiian female chicken. Yeah. Yeah, hey, thank you. you guys are doing a number one special great job out there. Hey, right. thank you. I love you guys' breakfast. It's unreal. All right, mahalo, yeah. my friend. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling from KIA. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from time? and go ahead yeah. with your question, please? Yes, I'm calling from Honolulu, and I'm going to be in Hilo next weekend, and I was just wondering if you need reservations. Not at all. Okay, thank no. you. <laughs> Depends how much. <laughs> just make a right turn after Just make a right turn after the airport and go to the traffic light, and there's Ken. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Oh, yes. Hi. I'm calling from Kona. Okay. This is regards about your chicken papaya. I'm a Filipino, so I really know how to cook that. <laughs> Have you tried to put a chili pepper leaves in your chicken papaya? We'll try it. <laughs> yes, that's supposed to be the, the main ingredients is papaya with the chili pepper leaves. The chili pepper leaves? Yes. Oh, interesting. That's oh, what you we have do to in remember, the Philippines. Kansas, we serve the children too, so we have to kind of keep it mild. Oh no, the chili pepper leaves are not hot. It's, it's not. It's no, just it's like not. paria. It doesn't. It doesn't really Come taste on any on any on hot on, on that. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for calling from Kona. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Aloha. Aloha. I'm calling from Honolulu, Hawaii. I think that you both are grand, great, and you make the best brown rice. I've oh, been a I know that. I love you all. Thank love you. you too, Auntie. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling from Honolulu. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm calling from Waikoloa. Okay. Uh, you know that tribe stew you made? Mm -hmm. that, that last thing you put in that yellow thing, what is that? Is it butter? That was roux. It's a... Uh, Half butter and half flour. It's to thicken, thicken the, uh, the stew a little bit. Well, butter and flour. Butter and flour, even portions. Just put it in a frying pan first, uh, let it meld, and then you just can put it right inside. Oh, yeah. I would start with like a teaspoon of butter and a teaspoon of flour first, just uh, for a small pot. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Waikoloa. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question? I'm in the white yeah. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Oh, I'm calling from Hilo, and we just wanted to say hello to Hoss, <laughs> and the food looks all good. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of Hoss's... Uh, yeah, tell him the neighbor said to bring some food home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you Thank for you. calling from Hilo. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Do we have another caller? Oh, hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm calling from uh, Kailua, Oahu, okay. and I wanted to know the name of that uh, wonderful dish with the egg in it and the two meat sticks. That's our sumo min. It's uh, something brand new we just introduced to Ken's. Oh, it's, that looks wonderful also, yeah. and my daughter wants to know where you are over there. What's the location? We're uh, a quarter of a mile past the airport. I mean, past the airport. In fact, if you get to the airport, when you drive to the very end of the airport, you're, you take a right on the main highway. You can't miss us. We're on the, the busiest corner in Hilo. All right, and thank you again. I sure like this program. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for calling from Kailua on the Oahu. Uh, the phone numbers are on the screen, and uh, for those of you on the Outer Islands, you can call Collect at the 961-9046 number. Okay, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead with your question, please. Calling from Volcano. Okay. I'm wondering, uh, when I'm in Hilo, can I pick up those hats? <laughs> <laughs> we started something, didn't we? <laughs> no comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you for so calling from Volcano. Yeah. We have uh, two other callers. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. Uh, I tuned in late and I seen them making the omelet. And every weekend I go in like 3 o'clock in the morning and I get the best omelet I ever had. And how you make them? How you get them so fluffy? Uh, how do you make the fluff, uh, the, the omelet so fluffy? She. What ingredients do you put in? I, I've seen that you put them in the blender, but what, it, what do you put in to make them so, does, does the blender make them fluffy? Just yeah. the blender. No ingredients, just the eggs. How many eggs in one omelet? Three. Three. Three? Yeah. And it comes out like five. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. I'll keep coming every weekend. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for calling from Hilo. Maybe Rick can make another one while we're we're fielding these questions here. Sure. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, I'm Hi. calling from Kailua Kona. Okay. I was just wondering when you made that ca that pig. Uh, what was that banana stem you said that you put at the end where you split it in half? Yeah. Just a stalk of a banana. Okay, I thought that's what you said. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to remind those people in Kona, there's the uh, bungee top disease over there. So if you have any bungee top disease of bananas, make sure that you call the Department of Agriculture and chop those trees down because we sure don't want them on the east side here where we have a fantastic banana industry. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And the question is for Lana. On your papaya chicken, do you always boil the papaya before or do you ever boil it with the chicken? No, usually it's with the chicken because of the time that we have. We have to find a way to, so that we can get it cooked and ready to sample. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question? Hi, I came from Kauai. Okay. Um, do you know your chicken papaya? Um, do you put um, patis or bagoong? I use patis. Patis? Yes. Oh, I see. Um, what time do you put soap in? A big pardon? What time do you put soap in? Oh, 24 hours. Oh, 24. We, we don't close. <laughs> oh, 24 hours? Oh, yeah. And where are you first located? We're at the busiest corner in Hilo, just outside of the airport, heading towards the ocean. So it's been oh, I see. Um, I'll try to come down. <laughs> Do you feel coffee tonight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye now. Thank you for calling from the island of Kauai. Uh, we have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And I was wondering, do you still serve your fish and eggs? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have to rant and rave on that. Every time I was a pie, I got to come down to Ken's and have the fish and eggs with hash browns and the um, church sack. <laughs> In fact, uh, Jack asked earlier, I think that might be one of our signature dishes is our mahi and eggs in the morning. We sell quite a bit of that. Aloha, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? My name is Kalina. I'm calling from Kahalu. I want to see which person is the magician there that makes the omelet. I just walked in, saw you guys. I'm a longtime customer, and this is not just a pancake house. 
this is a world class omelet house. So make your omelet, and I'll be over there in a few weeks and try it. Bye bye. All right. All right. Thank you for calling. There's three of them to do that right here. We have two more callers. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question? Hello, I'm calling from Honolulu. Okay. And I have a question on the charge too. Um, Rick was saying that there was a secret ingredient that he used, and I missed it. Could you tell me what it was? Chili, Chili powder. Chili powder. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other one on your oriental style mahi, um, I, I guess I didn't see you preparing it in the foil. Is there any kind of seasoning that you put on it? Not in the beginning, no. We just put the mahi in for it to steam itself in its own juices. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling from Honolulu. And for those of you who just joined us, make sure that next Thursday you're not late and watch us at 7 p.m. on this very same channel. We'll be here again uh, doing another cooking class for you. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Uh, yes, I would like to talk to Rick, my helper. Hi. Yeah. Are you Kaluapi? How long does it take to put it in the stove? How many degrees? About 350 degrees. It takes about four hours to cook. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Honolulu. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Hilo. I wanted to know where we can get the recipe for your folks' spice soup. I'm sorry? Recipe, recipe for the tripe stew. Our recipe for the tripe stew? Yeah. By Jack's book. Jack's uh, book. Well, it's going to be in Jack's book. <laughs> <laughs> and if you come Thank to you, see Rick. us, I'll be more than happy. If you want to give me a call in the morning, I'll be more than happy to give it to you also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you for calling from Hilo. Uh, don't forget our cookbook. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Oh, hi. I'm from Kailo Kona. Okay. I had three questions to ask you. Okay. But the other two has been answered for me. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I couldn't, I didn't hear what, what she said about the uh, tripe stew. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the end, what she put in. What did you put in I the tripe stew? I used a roux, which is a thickening agent of butter and flour, yeah. Butter and flour. Equal yeah, equal amount. Oh, okay. And you well, cook, you cook no. that first. You have yes. to cook it first. You have Put it to in a cook it pack. first. Melt your butter, add your flour, equal amount, and then you'll notice it'll come like a paste. It will get hotter. And then you just add it to whatever you're thickening. Right oh. now, it's stripes too. Okay, I appreciate it. And um, I really appreciate to see that you guys working with glove on. Thank you. You know, I mean, I see a lot of cook shows, and most of the guys don't use glove at all. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it very much to see you guys using gloves. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. A very clean kitchen you have. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. And mahalo from calling from Kona. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Uh, yes. My, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. Um, I would like to know what do you recommend for us big Hawaiians <laughs> out there? Yeah, number one special. I get Thanks. several of them. I have an Auntie Lana's breakfast that'll, uh, it's an eight ounce patty with gravy and grilled onions, uh, three eggs, three scoops of rice, three pancakes, that, that's pretty good there. There's another one we have called a Kanaka Combo. Uh, that's a six ounce steak with six ounces of mahi and I believe five pieces of shrimp. Three. Three, three. pieces of shrimp. And also, there's some big plates. It's a big plate. There's okay, the one. Thank you very much. There's the one sitting right over there too. That's the sumo man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm calling from Hanalei, Kauai. Okay. And uh, we were there uh, several weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> it's a wonderful place. And I, it's really nice to see you folks. The, the fellow that called earlier and said you guys work with love, I believe that. Thank I you. believe that. And we'll be there this uh, sometime in October and expect us to be there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Bye-bye. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you for calling from Hanalei over on Kauai. Uh, we have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hi. I'm yes. Horace. Uh, Rock Survivor would like to say hello. <laughs> 
And he wanted to see you in a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. You said you're doing great. I'm show up once in a while. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling. Another, another fan for Ken's. Uh, you have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and Hi, go uh, ahead. I just wanted to say that you guys are doing a really great job and and mom, I think you're the best cook in the world. <laughs> hey, Liz. Hey, Liz. Hey, Liz. Okay, <laughs> there's uh, you're not mom. You're all dead. You're not mom. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for calling. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Oh, oh yeah, I'm from Hilo. Okay. And you know that chicken papaya? Uh -huh. I wanted to know what is the base that you throw in after a oh, chicken broth? That's just chicken base. It just strengthens the, the broth more. Oh, it's, uh, it's the powdered one, yeah? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hi, I'm calling from Kona. Okay. Um, I was wondering how long you got to cook the tripe? The tripe, too, altogether takes, uh, well, the tripe itself about 45 minutes for the first washing. Uh, it, it's It's the flavor of the tripe you like. You can cook it twice. You can wash it twice. We do it only, we cook it once, wash it once, and we put it right into a stew. We like it fairly strong. Uh, after we do it the first washing, there's 45 minutes. After that, it takes about 45 minutes more to finish the dish. Altogether, about an hour and a half. So you, you cook them first, and then you add the Basically, ingredients. We're, right, exactly. We cook it first, and we dump all the water out. And then we fill it one more time. And okay. then we cook it another 45 minutes with the ingredients. Okay, mahalo. You're welcome. Mahalo, and thank you for calling from Kona. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and your question, please? Uh, the acres up here, Jack. Okay. I'm curious, on the uh, Kahlua, when you cook them in the oven like that uh, to, to make the pork tender, do, do you ever add the liquid smoke to it? We did. We added a uh, half a cup of li liquid smoke. Oh, I must have missed pounds. that part. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also score the pig. Uh, we score it about, about an inch down, about eight cuts around the top along the fatty part. Oh. And then we uh, rub in, but like I mentioned earlier, wear gloves when you're rubbing this stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a hat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling from the acre. <laughs> we have another <laughs> caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. I wanted to know um, that uh, sumo noodles, doesn't it have soup? Yeah, there's a, there's a base in there right now. We did pour the base in. It's uh, uh, what we use as a shrimp I base. I didn't see you do that, so I thought mm. it was going to be dry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Maybe we can it. get the overhead camera on the sumo min uh, a little later. There we go. There is a soup base in there, and I can't wait to... Uh, but there's a lot of that. ingredients in there also. <laughs> okay, thank okay, you for thank calling. You. We're calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, where are you calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Waikoloa, and I want to know where you get the French um, omelet pan. Ricky? <laughs> I, uh, I order those from the mainland. Oh, I go, thank I, you. I don't think I'm allowed to mention a company name, so... Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. You can call me in the morning and I'll let you know. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, thanks for calling okay. from Waikoloa. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello? Yes, go I'm ahead. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. I want to know if your mahi is island mahi or like from some other place, like some places. We buy it flash frozen, unfortunately, because the amount we go through. We can't keep a consistency with island uh, local mahi. Uh, sometimes it's here and sometimes it's not. So unfortunately, to be consistent in our business, we have to buy a flash frozen mahi out of Thailand mostly. Out of Thailand. Mm. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, I'm calling from Paradise Park. Okay. The um, time to cook the pork butt in the oven. How long do you cook the pork pie? Oh, we cook it for four hours at about 350. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Thank you for calling from Paradise Park. I think we have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello. Hi, go ahead. Yes, hello. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Mayava. Yes. 
uh, my son went to Foothill, and then uh, he met your niece there, uh, Benji. And are you related to them? Uh, yes. In, uh, like yeah, Benji's my niece. Yeah. Yes. Auntie Malu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. because uh, we live in Kona, and we wanted to never could find a good restaurant. And when I, we put your program on, I said, wow, look. They really don't have only hot cakes over there. <laughs> <laughs> they have a uh, uh, home, uh, home style cooking. And oh, yeah. 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 yeah, well, well uh, now we know where to go. At the other places have uh, rushed these things through, and we said, ah, we go back corner. <laughs> but now we, we found a place. And thank you very much for this well, wonderful Come program. and introduce yourself when you come to Hilo, please. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank Aloha. you for calling from Kona. We have two other callers. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, I'm calling from KL. Uh -huh. I'd like to know on your Kalua Peak, how much water did you add? Uh, you fill the pan up halfway. Halfway, yes. okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question? Hi, I'm Kali from Ka'awa. Hi, Ricky. Hey. It's your sister. Hi, sis. I'm so proud of you and your staff, and everything looks wonderful, and <laughs> it's such a shame that I have to get all recipes from you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My only brother, and he has to teach me how to cook. That's okay. Anyway, I enjoy the show, and you guys are doing a great job, and I can't wait to go up to Hilo. All right, love Bye. Bye. Thank you for calling from Ka'awa. We have two more callers, and we have about two more minutes. So real quick, uh, where are you calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, I want to know, you know, all of this um, preparation on this food that you're making now, are they available every day or certain days? Um, but I want to know these, the omelets we on the menu every day. every day. I'm sorry, some of, the, some of the things we make as specials only, the omelets, the sumo min, uh, we make uh, every day. The other ones are specials that we make periodically. Kalua pig. Oh, the Kalua pig, too. We make that every day. That is on our, on our menu. Like, for instance, I'm so interested in your tribe stew. Uh-huh. That's, That's Fridays. Fridays. Friday afternoons, Friday evenings. Friday evening. Or Saturday morning uh, tripe, uh, tripe stew omelets. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Okay, thank you for calling. Uh, we have another caller real quick. Uh, where are you calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, you, guys, you guys omelets, yeah? I'd like to know why you folks bring gravy for it. I'm sorry? The you gravy? Do you use uh. gravy. Yeah, we do. We have uh, several kinds of gravy. We have a turkey gravy, we have a mushroom gravy, and we have just a regular gravy. We use them on a certain... Uh, I omelets. let Ricky explain All which right. ones get the gravy. Oh, uh, this sauce. Sauce. Oh. Got a bowl. <laughs> oh, <my> guys. <laughs> Good job, brother. Hello, man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling. Uh, we've come to that portion of the class where we've run out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Ken's House of Pancake. Uh, we, well, I guess we have time for one call. Let's get the last caller and uh, let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. All right, this is the same guy called and asked the three questions, but <laughs> I only want to say two. <laughs> my, last question, my last question is, okay, I need that hat. <laughs> uh, okay. wait, wait, what, do I have to go call uh, Hilo and pick up the hat? You've got to be hired by me as a cook. Uh, it's only for the cooks. And okay, thank you for being persistent. <laughs> well, what if I come in and visit you then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for oh, calling. Okay, All right. <laughs> And again, I'd like to thank Rick Mai Eva and Auntie Lana, Ricky Louise, and uh, Hoss uh, Gray for joining us this evening. We hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening when we'll have Topo Gigio's uh, Fine Italian Cooking. Uh, please join us next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching Focus on Agriculture. <laughs>